Now let us understand Gibbs energy and the spontaneity. See, we know that we have just done that the total entropy change is equal to the entropy change of the system and entropy change of the surroundings. It's the sum of the two. Now, if the system is at, so it's, so the, if the process is a, is, a, is a spontaneous process, we know that we can easily make out what we can get is that the entropy is, as always, is increasing. Now, if the system is losing, its entropy, entropy is decreasing, the, uh, the surroundings entropy is increasing. Suppose the system is, the, uh, the process which we have taken is exothermic in nature. So decrease in the enthalpy of that is in, increase in the enthalpy of the surroundings. So if we write delta S surroundings equal to delta H of surrounding upon T, we know that this delta H surrounding is negative of the delta H of system upon T. So we can replace delta H surroundings in this, in this formula by minus delta H naught of system upon T. So we are here, we are considering a process to be spontaneous and is exothermic. When the, both the sides are multiplied by T, what we get is T delta S total is equal to T delta S system minus delta H naught system. You change the sign, you bring a negative sign out, what you get is delta H system minus T delta H naught system is greater than or equal to zero. Because if the process is spontaneous, we know that the total entropy change must be increasing, that we know. And therefore, this whole term must be increasing. And that means this whole term is given a, given a one term it is expressed in terms in place of one term which is called delta G naught. So it should be negative and um, it should be more than zero. It means what? That its negative sign indicates that for a spontaneous process, the delta G naught has to be what is in, in that case, in any case, it has to be uh, negative. So if the process, in, for any process or any reaction, this delta G naught is negative, that means that process is spontaneous. If it is positive, it is non-spontaneous. And if it is zero, then it is at equilibrium. From here, we can easily make out that this delta G naught is equal to delta H minus T delta S naught. Now, let us just uh, go into the details of this Gibbs free energy. We call it usually a free energy. See, this is uh, delta G naught is equal to delta H naught minus T delta S naught. Let me first give you an idea about what is this delta G naught is. It's the Gibbs free energy or it's the amount of energy available with the system which is actually being used for useful purpose. So it's always is equal to minus W useful work done. So it is the actual that amount of energy which is actually being used for doing some useful work. Now always remember this is the actual uh, term which actually gives us the exact criteria. Criteria of spontaneity of a reaction. It gives us a criteria of spontaneity of a reaction. Because it is the summation of the delta S and T delta S. Now, it's a state function. Its absolute value cannot be determined. Only the change in its value is determined. And delta G naught indicates the standard Gibbs free energy change, which is actually at the standard temperature in of the substance and at one, at one bar pressure. Now remember, how it becomes the criteria, deciding criteria of the spontaneity of a reaction. We know that for a process to be spontaneous, this delta G is negative, the process or reaction is spontaneous. If this delta G comes out to be positive, this process or reaction is non-spontaneous. And if this is equal to zero, the reaction is, or the process is that, this is at equilibrium. Now, how we can make out the conditions of spontaneity? Let me tell you, there are basically three conditions for spontaneity. The first is that delta G, delta H is negative and delta S is positive. That means the process is exothermic and then randomness is increasing. So what will happen is delta G naught negative minus plus of this will always be negative and the process will be spontaneous. Such processes are spontaneous at all temperatures. That's most important in this. The second is, second condition can be delta H is negative but delta S is also is negative. The example can be this magnesium solid combusted in oxygen gas 
giving you magnesium oxides, oxide solid. So entropy is decreasing, but the enthalpy is, is actually uh, is negative. The, there's a tendency to acquire minimum energy. So that makes this process spontaneous. Remember, in this case, this delta G will be negative if and only if because this negative minus negative of this, it just become positive. So what you need to remember is the delta H has to be bigger than T delta S. So such processes, remember, always are spontaneous below a certain temperature and beyond that te particular temperature, this T delta S becomes more than delta H and then this process becomes, delta G becomes positive and it becomes non-spontaneous. Now such processes in which be these become spontaneous below a certain temperature only because of delta H and that's why these are called enthalpy driven reactions. These are called enthalpy driven reactions. Now let me give you one more, the third condition. Then in the third condition, the delta G can be positive, but the delta S can also be positive. The best example is evaporation of water liquid into gas. In this, what we find is that the entropy is increasing, but the enthalpy is positive. And you need to know this, that if this, this, this delta G will be negative if and only if this is positive, this is positive. Remember, in this case, this T delta S has to be more than delta H naught. It means what? The such processes are spontaneous only above a certain temperature because of which this T delta S product is negative and uh, negative and is more than delta H and that makes overall delta G negative. And that's why these such processes are, are called entropy driven reaction because it is the entropy which makes them spontaneous. So this is how we decide the, we determine the, the conditions of spontaneity of a reaction also.